Hi, in this video, I am going to talk about how to build a time series ARIMA model uh, using SAS. So, we're going to take a data cell called AIR data set. It is there in SAS help. If you go to SAS help, you will get this data. Um, so, this data is about uh, the number of international airline travels per month. So, that's there for 12 years. So, we have got 144 observations. So, I'm going to show you the data. So I've already taken the data in my work library, but if you go to the SAS help, you will uh, you will see that there, the data set there. Okay, so we've got two variables. One is the date variable, which is in month, uh, and then the variable of interest, which is the time series variable, is the variable called air. So air is the name of the variable, and is also the name of the data set, by the way. So don't get confused. Okay. All right, so we're going to use this data set to uh, to build a time series ARIMA model, and we'll do the forecasting. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is is to plot this data set. Okay, how does it look like? Okay, um, so the first thing you know to do in any time series model building is to see how the data looks like. So we're going to plot this data. We simply have a scatter plot, and this is how it looks like. Okay, we have got international airline travels in the y-axis and debt in the in the x-axis, and this is how it looks like, right? Um, you can form some opinion about it whether it's a stationary data, whether it's non-stationary data, you know, whether there's seasonality or there's no seasonality. All those things uh, just by looking at uh, the plot. But just to keep it simple, I'm not going to form any opinion at this moment, but we'll see these things as we uh, you know uh, go ahead with uh, you know building this model all right so the next thing we'll see is to uh, get all the descriptive statistics about this data and how do we get it we use the procedure uh, proc called proc arima and uh, we'll use this data set data air and the keyword that we're going to use is identify and the time series variable is the variable called air and then we'll use an option called n lag equal to 24 uh, well n lag is equal to 24 is nothing but that we want to see how the data behaves for its 24th lag okay so you can have 36 lag 48 lags and so on so it, it's an option given to you you can you know usually you get it for 12 for 24 or 36 and so on uh, is only for there's no model building happening here so uh, you have that option of, of the luxury of of you know um, changing things and you know getting different kind of kinds of descriptive statistics from this data so you don't have to worry about uh, what exactly should be the end lag at this moment so don't worry about that uh, and let's run this so this is purely uh, an exploratory uh, data analysis at this moment. So uh, we have this option of, uh, you know, keep trying different n lags. All right. So you get the mean, the standard deviation, the number of observations, the different lags, uh, and the correlations, autocorrelation rather. Why we call it autocorrelation? Because the correlation of the series with its own lag. That's why it's called autocorrelation. Right? Auto means self. Correlations means self, you know, correlation it in it with itself. Alright. Okay. <clears throat> so you see there is correlation. Of course there is correlation because you, you know all these things are significant as you see the p values uh, are less than 0.05, so that is correlation, right? Autocorrelation, which is a good thing because we want um, our uh, present value in the time series to be correlated or to be uh, related to its past value, and that's the reason why you're going to use ARIMA model for forecasting. If that's not there, then it's, there's no point building a, a time series model. It's it's purely random, and it's not going to help you uh, you know forecast uh, your future values correctly okay so at this point in time let me tell you that if you're not familiar with time series theory please go back and watch my video on time series theory on my channel there is a one hour video on time series theory please go ahead and watch that video you can go to the playlist and 
watch uh, the time series theory uh, video on that playlist and uh, you'll be familiar with the basics of time series modeling and then you can watch this video to see how you can build it um, using SAS. There are uh, other trend and correlation uh, correlation uh, plots. Uh, yeah, we'll see these plots. The autocorrelation function, the partial autocorrelation function, the inverse autocorrelation functions, and and so on. Okay. All right. So. So what do we get out of this autocorrelation function and partial autocorrelation function? Well, one thing that we are very sure of is that this data is not stationary. Even from the plot, we could see that it doesn't seem to be a stationary series. For stationary series, the mean and uh, the, the variance um, should ideally be constant. Okay, And it doesn't seem to be the case. right? Also, if you look at the PA to the autocorrelation function graph, the ACF, there should be a sudden drop of in, in, a, in a stationary series. But that's not the case here. You see the drop uh, in the ACF value is, you know, is not steep. It's, it's, it's rather quite flat. And that's not uh, the nature of a stationary series. So it, it's clearly a non-stationary series. Okay, and PACF we use it uh, for identification of the number of, uh, you know, number of the order of the ARIMA series, ARIMA model. Okay, and we'll we'll uh, discuss about that. IACF we never quite use. We very seldom we use, so we don't uh, really look into IACF. Using SCF and PACF, you can very well build an ARIMA model without looking into the IACF okay uh, so the two things that we are uh, we are <coughs> very uh, interested to know is whether the, the series is stationary and whether it is a white noise so white noise series is basically a random series so you do not build a time series model on a white noise uh, time series data. So if the data is white noise, so you simply leave it there. You cannot build a time series model because it's purely random. There is no point building a model. Uh, well, you can actually uh, see whether, um, you know, there is, you know, that the data is, is, is white noise by looking at the autocorrelation check for white noise okay and you see that the p values are all significant that means it's not purely random there is highly uh, uh, highly high correlation between the lags okay and it's not purely random hence series loss is not white noise and it is non stationary so these two things are clear at this moment the next thing that we'll do is to convert this stationary time series to an uh, sorry the non-stationary time series to a stationary time series. And how do we do that? We <coughs> do differencing. So differencing is just about <coughs> you know uh, subtracting the lag from its value. So there are this first order differencing, the second order differencing. We start with first order differencing, and we see then whether the time series is, is now stationary or not okay um, if it is not stationary then we go ahead with second order and then if it is still not stationary then we go ahead with third order stationary but most of the times you will get a non stationary series to be stationary in just first two differencing so you don't have to go to for third differencing and so on but yeah but you still can try if you are familiar with time series theory, you might be wondering why aren't we doing the statistical test for stationarity checks like you can do Dickey Fuller test, Augur Winter Dickey Fuller test as well, ADF test as well. Right? So you can you can try that as well. So I'm not going to use ADF for stationarity check, but you certainly can do that. Okay. Um, but you also can look at the series um, and 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 also look at the ACF value. 
um, and and get to know whether it's a stationary series or a non-stationary series. So we're going to do the first order differencing. How do we do that? So identify var and then uh, the variable that is of interest to us in bracket just put one and that's how we do the first order differencing and when you do second order since we change it to two and then it's going to be second order differencing so let's first do the first order differencing and we'll see whether we get uh, the non stationary series as stationary series in the first order itself so what we're going to look at is the ACF well now you see there is a there is a, uh, a steep decrease or there is a sudden decrease in the ACF values right it's not flat anymore so it seems that with the first order differencing we get stationary series instead of a non stationary stationary one right so <clears throat> so we are fine with first order but we also can look at the second order just to be sure whether the second order is better than the first order or not okay but if, a, if both are stationary then we'll go ahead with first order okay because having less terms um, is always better right well you see this is not better than the first order so we'll go ahead with the first order right all right so that's done the next step is uh, the estimation and the diagnostic checks okay so there are three steps in time series model building. First one is, is identification. The second one is the estimation and diagnostic check. And the third one is the forecasting, right? So these are the three steps in a box linking uh, method of uh, time series forecasting, right? Uh, so the syntax for estimation is very simple. Um, is is use just estimate and then provide what model you are going to estimate right so that's something that you need to put in right in so whether we go to air one or ma1 arma1 arima111 and so on right sorry one arma11 one, one. so uh, how do we know which model is to be uh, used okay so let's look at the plots again okay so let's use the first order Differencing and then okay. Now the thing is there is a strong correlation between the lags. So one thing that we are very uh, clear, right? That means its own lag. That means if y t is the time series, it has high correlation with y t minus one. So clearly there is a uh, air term, right? Whether we're going to have a MA term is not, uh, whether that's going to make it, uh, the model better, we'll see later. So we can try several models to see whether we can use uh, MA term uh, as well uh, in combination with AI terms. Okay. But now we have already done, done the differencing. Okay. So there is already uh, the I term. In ARIMA, we have AR and I and then MA, right? If you're familiar with the time series theory, there are three terms P, Q, R. So P stands for the AR term, Q is for the differencing. So we already have first order differencing Q equal to 1, we already have it. And then we have um, R, which is the MA term, right? So, um, so here the MA term, we will see whether we actually need the MA term. We'll start with the AR1 and then we'll see if uh, adding the residual makes any difference so for ma we are using p equal to one and if you are going to use the ma okay i'm sorry for ar p equal to one uh for ar one for ar two if p equal to two uh, and so on so for ar term it's the p and for ma terms it's the q so here you see we are going to use both uh, P and Q. So here, so we will estimate the uh, AR1 model first. Okay. Now remember that uh, we have already done the differencing. So the I term is already one. In the ARIMA, the I term is the uh, 
uh, the differencing right stands for the differencing we already done the first order differencing right so it's already one so we'll keep in that keep that in mind okay so <clears throat> So if for AR1, we use the P equal to 1, okay, in the um, estimate, along with the estimate keyword, okay. Uh, all right, so we will uh, run that. Okay. Remember, this is for the differencing series, differenced series. So, so it's basically ARIMA 110, okay, not 100. So that's... Something we need to keep in mind. All right, you see uh, the terms here. We have mu. So these are the estimates. We have mu, which is the average, and then you have the uh, the uh, the beta coefficient, which is the point three zero five. It's uh, also significant significant right it's less than 0.05 so it's significant so that's the AR1 and you have all the diagnostic statistics like AIC, SBC and so on so these are going to be used while comparing the time series models right so the one with the least AIC and SBC should be the one to be choose uh, to be selected finally right and then we will see the autocorrelation of residuals okay so the idea is to see uh, to um, ensure that the uh, residuals are not autocorrelated there is no correlation but clearly there is some correlation right the p value is significant so the so the residuals are correlated indeed correlated let's look at the normal residual uh, plot and you see that uh, it's not normal right so there are two things two uh, uh, signal that tells us that that uh, this model doesn't fit uh, the data quite well firstly the residuals are correlated and uh, the plot doesn't seem to be uh, a normal plot okay uh, or it doesn't seem to be a normal distribution the residual uh, doesn't fit a normal uh, distribution hence we will see other models right and we'll add the ma terms which is the the error term to do the model and see if it makes a model better or the forecast better okay so we for ma we use the keyword uh, q equal to one so we'll start with ma1 okay uh, okay let's run this one Of course, you can use p equal to two, q equal to two, p equal to one, q equal to two, p equal to two, q equal to one, and so on. So we can try all sorts of combination and see which one is the best model for this data. Okay, we'll see the autocorrelation. There's still some autocorrelation uh, between the residuals. So uh, the same problem exists. But the residual plot is uh, much better, right? Uh, it's more normal now. So this model is better than the previous one. The um, ARIMA 111 is better than ARIMA 110, right? So this is clear, okay? Uh, we can try with other models, okay? There's no issue with that. So we can try, let's say, P equal to 2 and Q equal to 1 and let's see if that's better <coughs> uh, it's not better in fact it's worse okay so so this one is the best one right the arima one 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 and i might wonder why we have three ones well we have p equal to one who is the air term and this is the differencing term the first order differencing and this is the ma term so we have arima one 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 is the final model for us right because among the three models that we have seen this the arima one 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 gives uh, 
better results like looking at the diagnostics statistics we could know that this is better you also can compare the AIC and BIC okay uh, and see the one that's uh, with the least uh, AIC BIC should be the one uh, uh, we should choose okay so that's about uh, <coughs> estimating right and the final thing is forecasting now that we are sure that we are going to go with uh, arima 111 we we'll use that uh, for forecasting the next uh, 12 months values right uh, syntax is very simple we'll use the same code proc arima we'll simply add the last part to it which is forecast the keyword forecast and then if we want for next 12 months the lead is 12 if we want it for next 24 months we want you know we just use 24 or 18 months 18 and so on interval should be month because it's a monthly forecast id which is the unique id which is date uh, and uh, we will save it in a new data set called results okay you can give any name okay no problem with that and then we'll use the same estimate okay p1 uh, and q1 okay and this is the differencing okay so don't forget this differencing part identify var equal to a so because the the i uh, the the order for i um, comes from there okay so it's a arima 111 model and let's use this to forecast the future values okay we'll run this and what we're going to get is the values the forecast values the predicted values for next 12 months using arima 111 okay and uh, you can see the values so these are the values so we had 144 observation now we have 156 that means we've got 12 additional observations which basically are the future values okay so these are the values and you see the plot here and also the 95 percent confidence uh, limits so this is how the forecast looks like and then we have the 95 percent confidence limit that means in which range the forecast will lie okay so that's the way you build uh, an arima uh, model using using sas thank you